Welcome in, Rubber Ducks fans. This is Marco Lanave. We're joined by the new infield coach and third base coach of the Cleveland Guardians, Ruglis Odor. Joining with me to chat with him, our media relations manager, Jimmy Farmer, and my broadcast partner, Jim Clark. And uh, Rugi, of course, has been the manager with Akron the last four years. Ruglis Odor, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on the big league call-up. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. And I'm excited to, to be part of the big league coaching staff and can't wait to get there. Rugi, congratulations again. Um, it's so great to see you had that opportunity after just so many years with the organization. And we talked about this in the past, you and I have. Your country lost a great baseball guy and a mentor of yours, Vic Davalillo. Tell the fans about your relationship with Vic and what he meant to everybody in Venezuela. Uh, Vic Davalillo uh, was like, uh, I would say like, like Pete Rose and um, well known here in Venezuela. Uh, he was the king of the hit. Actually, he has the record here, here in, in Venezuela, just like Pete Rose has it uh, in the U.S. And um, I, I never had the opportunity to really uh, talk to him, but, but I used to see him on TV. I used to see him here in Venezuela playing, and I got the opportunity to, to meet his uh, 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 friends, uh, family members. Um, they all are in baseball. Actually, a couple of uh, his grandkids are right now in pro baseball. I don't know if you guys know that, but uh, uh, here in Venezuela, the team I'm working with just signed his uh, relative, he's a catcher, 16 years old, and um, they're so well known here in the country and, and uh, so sad that we lost such a great human being, such a great ball player. And, um, but um, I, I was glad that I had the opportunity to see him play and, and to see him uh, uh, break the record here in Venezuela when uh, he was, uh, I think he was 49 years old and still playing and, and had the opportunity to, to break the, the record for, for most uh, hits in, in the league. Well, Rugi, congratulations. Um, you know, you being back home in Venezuela actually coaching right now. Uh, so how, how did you learn about, you know, your, your call up to the Guardians and kind of how did that whole process kind of play out while you're back home and actually still coaching? Well, I was, um, I was in Caracas hitting ground balls. We were in the middle of uh, uh, batting practice and, and I had my phone with me and uh, I read a, a text, you know, from the manager, Stephen Buck, and, and he's like, hey, Ruggie, uh, do you have, you know, time to talk? And I'm like, absolutely, yeah, I, I have time. And I had to talk to the manager and say, hey, I got a call. Uh, I got to go. I, I'll, I'll be right back. And uh, he called me and, and he said, Ruggie, um, you know, we're going to interview you and, and um, I would love you know, for you to go through the process and, and, and hopefully, you know, uh, you get the opportunity to, to work with us at the big league level. And, and I said, absolutely. So I, I went through the interview process and, and um, I remember I was uh, doing groceries when uh, Stephen called me and, and, and said, you know, uh, the, the, the good news. And, and I was so excited and, 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 and happy, you know, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an honor and it's a privilege to, to be part of, uh, the big league club and, and I'm very excited about it. And Rugi, you mentioned getting that call. <laughs> you're at, you're at the grocery store. Yes, I was, I was. And, um, um, I was, I was almost paying, you know, for my uh, groceries and, and I had to, to talk to the lady. Hey, can you give me a couple of minutes? I'll be right back. And, um, and that's when uh, Stephen told me that, uh, you know, I got the job. So very, yeah, very excited and, and, and happy about it. You know, Rugi, dating back to your early days in your organization, you played for Kenny Bullock, you played for Brian Graham, we were together back in those 93, 94 teams in Canton, Akron. What'd you take and learn from playing for Kenny and Brian back in the early years in your playing career? 
if I have to say you know, one thing from both of them, it is the the uh, the way they went about helping me, helping players. Uh, they um, w with Ken Bollock, I didn't play much, but he knew I was young, and I remember him saying, "Rugi, you're gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. You just need." You know your time you need more time to play and then uh, with brian uh, i mean he went out out of his way to 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 help me out and and uh, i remember one day uh, he said rugi can you come early tomorrow and say absolutely so we were having a one-on-one -on -one session and and uh, he, he just he just both of them did things that were very special and 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 i really appreciate the way they they went about you know their business and, and trying to help me out and help every single player out at the ball, uh, in the team where we were playing. Some pretty good teams in the Canton years, and one guy who was so very good was Manny Ramirez. Right, right. He was young, extremely young, and and but obviously we all know the, the type of talent he had, and um, yeah, it, it's just. Uh, the confidence level, you know, that he had, and um, there were times he was going off for four with four strikeouts, and the very next day he was three for four with two home. So he knew that uh, you know the ups and downs of the game were part of it, and he didn't let anything bother him. And and I was uh, I was impressed the way uh, Manny handled failure and, and the way he bounced back and and. And was having success at, 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 at the double A level, and, and I think he was 19 years old when he was there, so very young and, and having a lot of success. He also played with Jim Tomey on the '91 team, and he had a heck of a year in '91. Correct, correct, Jim. You, you know, he signed as a shortstop. I don't know, Jim, if you know that. And then he went to third base, and, and obviously he ended up being a, a first baseman, but. Um, yeah, it's just uh, him and, and, and Charlie Manuel. They 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 both were on the same page, and, and and Charlie, I remember, you know, he took him under his wing and and helped him out, and and um, he had a great career. So I, mean, I saw him work. I saw the way he uh, he went about his business, and a very professional player, and and and, and you know, I'm I'm happy to to get to know him and, and to be part of uh, of the team where he was in the minor leagues. You know, back in those early years in the league for you, with the Eastern League stadium-wise, boy, have things changed from the 90s to what you went through the last couple of years as a manager and just how everything just taken such a step up in facilities and everything. Right, right. And, and, and um, it, it's it's for for the better of the players, you know, for for the industry, for the league, and and I'm so happy that uh, seems like every year we're getting better and better and better, and and and, and baseball is treating uh, baseball players in, in a better way, and and uh, that's what I think life is all about, right? Every year, let's let's see what we can do to uh, to help people and 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 to make ourselves better, and and I think that's what uh, the industry is trying to do. And, uh, and I'm glad that that is heading that way. Yeah, Jim kind of talked about your playing career, and I know you talked about this summer, actually, your transition from being a player to a coach. But going back to kind of those conversations you first had with Neil Huntington when you were making that transition and everything, did you ever think, you know, you'd be the winningest manager at Akron and then wind up in the big leagues? No, no, I never... I never thought about it. Actually, um, I, you know, thought that I was going to play 20 years in the big leagues and and have a, a different type of career. But but things didn't go that well. But um, I'm happy that I had the opportunity to to coach, to to spend time here in Venezuela in the academy. Then went to rookie ball and um, spend some time there and, and spend time at every level as as manager, as a hitting coach, infield coach, and um, and, and I had experience at, at every level and, and, and now I'm gonna get it at the big league level. So I'm I'm, um, I'm happy that, that I had, you know, the, the career that, that I had so far. And, and Rugi, thinking of yourself as, as a coach, you know, 
uh, at the start of your career, even maybe, you know, bef- before you had some, some higher level managerial uh, opportunities. I mean, what, what would you say is the difference between the, the coach and the manager that you were then to who you are now and what you're bringing to Cleveland at, at this time? I believe that respecting each personality is going to get the, the most out of the player. It, it's about uh, respecting people. It's about trying to, to get the most out of that person instead of making people be like you want them to be. So I think that's, um, that's, that's what I've done lately and, and I think it's, 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 it's been working. And, um, and, and I'm going to continue to do it. I think if we respect each other and, and find ways to, to, to get along and, 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 and respect each nationality, each personality, uh, I think that's one of the, the best ways to, to grow and, and to get the, the best out of the players. Rugi, how is your preparation different now as you head to spring training? Um, it's entirely different. You're still coaching third base, but you know, it, it's a much different role now. How do you prepare for that? We have a lot of people who are trying to make our job easier in the front office. They give us a lot of information and, and, and I believe that uh, we need to get as much as information as I can and, and, and simplify it to the players. But uh, yeah, the preparation is unbelievable and, and uh, the information that, that we get is it, 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 unreal. So I can tell you that uh, I have uh, um sheet that you know it's, it's like a cheat sheet that i use and i see a lot of information and, and i use some of that you know if i'm coaching third if i'm managing and, and i mean it goes from manager's tendencies to to i mean in stats if hitters swing at the first pitch percentages uh strikeout percentages work percentages uh ops um, exit velo tendency where they hit the baseball, uh, how quick uh, outfielders get to the baseball. If I'm coaching third, how uh, strong they have their arm, the accuracy. Um, it, 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 there's a lot of information that we get, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, glad that we have a lot of people who are helping us out to to get that information. If you guys are sitting around some night and someone goes, "Hey, Rugi, talk about Jonathan Rodriguez." What do you say? Well, he's uh, he has an unbelievable power, and and um, I'm afraid he's gonna he's gonna hurt me if if, if he pulls a ball on the ground and, and I'm coaching third. <laughs> but uh, he's uh, he's a great kid. First of all, he's uh, he's very quiet, very professional, and um, still has. Uh, a lot of room to grow, but unbelievable power. He he just needs to stay uh, disciplined at the plate, and and uh, once he does that, he's uh, he's gonna be a pretty special player. And and he's a we talk about his his offense, but he's a pretty good outfielder too. He didn't he didn't have a lot of experience in left field, and last year in winter ball, he asked his manager to play him in left because he needed to get experience and. He played over 50 games in left field, and uh, now he feels comfortable. So first time in left field, ended up playing over 50 games. And, and uh, this season in Akron, um, he was bouncing around between right field and left field. And, and he said, Rugi, I feel comfortable playing both positions. But uh, two years ago, he didn't because obviously the lack of experience in left. But um, yeah, he's a pretty good outfielder. His arm strength is above average too. And uh, he's, he's, he's a pretty special player. Could he get there within two years or less? Uh, I would say so, yes. If he stays disciplined at the play, which I think he's going to do it, he, um, he will be there in less than two years. So kind of staying on guys like Jonathan Rodriguez, Brian Rocchio is now you know, in the big leagues. George Valera seems to be right there. How kind of special is that for you that you've worked with these guys throughout the minors and now you're going to get to rejoin guys like that, guys like Stephen Kwan, Bo Naylor, Gavin Williams in on the big league staff. That's special. That's, that's, that's what I'm you know, thinking about it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there and, and it's almost like, 
you know, is this the Akron Bowl Club, you know, that we have right now? And yeah, pretty, pretty special group of players. And, uh, um, you know, the 2021 year when we have Freeman, Freeman is there, uh, Kwani, uh, Bo Naylor, uh, you know, so many players that, that we had, you know, the, the, the pitching staff that we had. And uh, uh, Brennan was there too as well at the end. Um, very, very special group of players, and, and the relationship that I have with them is is special. So it's gonna be it's gonna be cool to to be there with them and and, and have that great atmosphere again with them. And, and Rugi, as you think of now moving to the big leagues and the time that you had managing the the Akron club, what what are the highlights that stick with you? So many, but but. but the 2021 year when we won the championship, I remember the very first win we had was a walk-off by Oscar Gonzalez. And the last win we got to win the championship was a walk-off by Bo Naylor. What, what a special year. And um, yeah, so, so many, so many uh, great group of players that we had. And I remember that we were, we had like, we had like three different type of teams that year because of, you know, some players were going up to Columbus and then we had players coming up from, you know, Abel. And then uh, the second wave went up again and then we had another wave coming and uh, the chemistry was great. The guys were interacting with each other. Great. So that, that, was, uh, that was a special year, uh, the 2021 year. You've been around so many special players um, growing up as a player, as a coach and a manager, who stands out as a guy that you would think, boy, that guy is the best guy I've ever seen play this game in my time? So many, so many players. If I have to say one player, I will say probably Victor Martinez because he couldn't hit the ball out of the infield and and he was embarrassed and he said, Rugi, um, that was something that drove him because everybody else was doing it and he didn't have the power to hit the ball out of the infield. So we were playing in squad games and the outfielders were playing in the infield and because they knew he didn't have any strength to, to hit it over the infield. And um, he said, Rugi, that, that, that was something that really uh, made me work and, and because he felt so embarrassed that he couldn't hit the ball out of the infield. And, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, he, uh, he's a 300 hitter in, in, in the big leagues. And, and what he did, he, he was a shortstop and then he went to, to catching and then from catching, he went to the age, didn't really know how to prepare himself uh, to play the game as a DH and had to learn how to do it. Uh, so I saw different, levels and 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 so he went from from zero to 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 100 basically and and um, hitting from both sides of the play he couldn't hit from the right side just he was making contact from the left side and a little bit of contact from the right side and then um i always talk about victor because i if he did it i know i know anybody can do it if you put your time the effort and 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 you if you're disciplined and, and want and want to to get better i know you can do it because if victor did it uh, anybody can do it if you have you know those qualities you know i can remember when he played in when he played at akron he was in the bullpen one night he he, he wasn't in the lineup and we see this guy warming up in the bullpen a left-hander it was victor he could throw and i'm sure you know this he could throw yes easily ambidextrous i'm thinking this guy is out there warm as a left-handed pitcher in the bullpen that's how talented he was a lot of folks don't know that right right i saw him quite a few times playing catch from the left side i mean the first time i'm like wait a minute <laughs> Victor, what, what is that? No, I've been doing it since I was a kid. So, wow. Yeah, that's, that was impressive. Yeah. And, and very loose and clean arm action. It wasn't like he was yeah. learning how to throw it. He, he was like very natural making the throw. And uh, yeah, I, I knew that. Yep. 
So Ruggie's shifting gears from one former catcher to another. Um, Stephen Vogt, obviously a lot. You know, he mentioned you in his little post or his little uh, press conference after the uh, news was announced, um, saying that the phone call with you was the best one uh, on the new coaching staff. So how well did you know Stephen before, and kind of ha- how much have you guys gotten to know each other since the coaching staff announcement? I didn't know him at all, so I knew who he was. But but I, I I didn't know him until talking, um, you know, in, in the interviews. But um, um, he, uh, he he's trying to to bring us you know together. And, and from what I've seen, he's uh, he's he's a person who really cares about people. He wants to uh, to get to know you. He he wants to help you. And uh, it's it's been a great first interaction with him. But but I didn't know him before. You know the interview, and um, but uh, we have um, we have a player here who uh, played with him, and uh, I asked him, and he's like, "Rugi, you're gonna love him. You know, you're gonna like him a lot." His uh, his name is Luis Torrens, and uh, he's great, man. You're gonna like him, man. and uh, and I'm like, "Okay, all right, thank you, thank you." <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been great so far. So I really. Uh, I, I really like the way he's been, uh, you know, handle, handling things and, and, and trying to uh, to bring the group together because he, he doesn't really know a lot of us and he's trying to, to, to get to know us. And Rugi, of course, you, you'll have familiarity with a lot of folks from being in the organization. And also Brad Goldberg, who was your pitching coach this past year with Akron, is joining you on the Major League staff. Uh, how is the work with him this year and and seeing him be ready now for an opportunity to, to be in the big leagues as well? Oh, he's ready. Brad's ready. Uh, he's all about preparation, all about being prepared, all about helping uh, the players and and he knows the analytic power of the game but he also understand that that uh, we have uh, uh, young pitchers that that need a lot of help so he he has the the, the perfect combination and um uh, i was so excited that uh, he had he, he had the opportunity to to interview for the job and he got it and, and uh, he's gonna be he's gonna be great for that group of pitchers you know, Rugi, I, I look at the roster in Cleveland and, you know, I always see the thing is half full. Um, I see so many positives. And with the pitching you guys have, and you're going to keep getting more and more, as you know, I think you'll always be in a position to challenge for a title in that division with what you have there already and with what's coming up. Yeah, we, we have we have a young team and we did it a couple of years ago. We were young and, and not too many people thought that uh, the big league club had it was going to have the opportunity to advance to the postseason. And, and I mean, we have players now that they have, you know, a couple of years under their belt at the big league level and, and they, they, they know how to play the game. They know that it takes work. It's not just, yeah, I'm here in the big leagues and things are going to be easy. We, we still need to work and, and let's not forget what got you there. So the, the amount of work that uh, you've done in the past, uh, let's let's continue to do it and, and let's continue to move on. But uh, we, we have a lot of uh, a lot of talent and and we're young, but uh, just because we're young, that doesn't mean that we, we, we're, you know, we're, we don't know how to win ball games. These kids are, are ready to compete and ready to win ball games and and we're going to have a fun year. I think the baseball IQ is very high with the guys you've had. How do you pick a shortstop? I mean, there's so many candidates, you know, Tanner Rocchio, you can take something from each of those guys. You think both are ready. How do you pick one? Well, I, I think that's, that's a question for Steven. So he'll, he'll <laughs> might give you a better answer. <laughs> but um, yeah, great. That's a great question. You know, the, the, uh, the more talent you have, the better. You know, the more options you know you're gonna have, and um, it's um, it, it's a great uh, thing to have. You know, uh, three, four uh, players who can play shortstop, who can play multiple positions. You know, so we're we're, we're very excited to have uh, Rocky, Otena, Arias, Freeman, that that they all can play at that position. 
And, and Ruggie, you're obviously not the only Odor in the big leagues now. What was uh, what was your nephew Rudnid's reaction when you got announced? He was excited. He was excited, and um, um, I wasn't supposed to say uh, anything to a lot of people, but but I, I told Stephen, "Hey, you know, I want to tell mom and dad, so you know, oh, Ruggie, yeah, don't worry about it." So I told. I told mom and dad, I said, don't, don't tell anybody, please. And mom grabbed the phone and, and started to, you know, calling people. But um, yeah, they were excited. They were very excited. You know, it took him, took him, I think, three years to, to get to the big leagues as a player. It took me a little longer. But uh, uh, yeah, they were, they, he was excited and the whole family was excited for the opportunity I'm getting. And, 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 and I'm also... Uh, thankful for the opportunity that I'm getting. Uh, thankful you know, to the front office and, and the people who made this happen. Well, Ruggie, thanks again uh, for taking some time with us. And we in Akron, of course, are so excited for you as well. And thanks so much for, for sharing some of the experience. We're looking forward to seeing you uh, coaching in Cleveland. Thank you. Thank you. And, and please say hi to everybody in the front office in Akron. And, and um, I look forward to see you guys soon. That's manager Ruglis Odor from the Akron Rubber Ducks for the past four seasons. And now he is the infield coach and third base coach for the Cleveland Guardians, Ruglis Odor.